We are off to meet Pak Mohammed, who lives in a small village in Aceh, on the northern tip of the island of Sumatra, Indonesia. As we travel down the coast from Sigli, we see a checkerboard of small enterprises. We pass Warong stalls in the villages, rice paddies, the salt farms, and brackish fish ponds known locally as tumbucks. There is a mosque in every village, cattle roam along the roads, and the moped is the most common form of transportation. Fishing and aquaculture are traditional livelihoods for the coastal Achenese. They supply the local markets with milkfish and then export high-value fish and shrimp across the globe. Pak Mohammed is head of the local co-op in his village of Lanchang and his half-hectare tambak is ringed with mangroves. He is farming milkfish, tilapia, shrimp and the seaweed gracilaria in a polyculture system. It wasn't always like this. The province of Aceh had been destabilized by the Free Aceh Movement, which effectively isolated the area from the rest of the world. Mangroves had been cleared to establish new shrimp ponds. Disease was killing the high-value shrimp. And then, on Boxing Day 2004, a tsunami destroyed the coastal communities. A satellite view of the coastline only gives a bird's eye view of the sheer extent of the destruction. But on the ground amongst the destroyed villages, the uprooted trees, the displaced boats, the submerged paddies and ponds are the people, the families, the farmers, the fishermen, the stall owners, who have lost the thread that holds a community and culture together. Everything was gone. More than 150 foreign aid organizations responded to this disaster. And this is when Dr. Kevin Fitzsimmons from the University of Arizona first came to the area. On the coast, cash for work programs provided a modest income to villagers who cleared debris and sediment from the canals, ponds and rice paddies. Mangroves were replanted and with the influx of aid and expertise, the aquaculture industry was able to craft a new future. Co-ops were started in the villages. A first-class regional research and extension facility was rebuilt and ongoing workshops and farmer-to-farmer -farmer programs funded. The women weren't forgotten. Workshops on using agar from seaweed to make candy and other treats increased the overall household income. Now technical assistance and support are only a cell phone or Skype call away. The coastal communities are no longer isolated and village leaders like Pak Mohammed were instrumental in crafting this new future. Kevin and Hassan Houdin from the Research and Extension Institute are visiting Pak Mohammed. There is nothing like these on the ground visits to forge an easy dialogue between the farmers and the experts. Actually seeing an operation and discussing the successes and pitfalls is something you just can't do from afar. New equipment changes hands, best management practices mulled over, and problems can be hashed out on the spot. In just seven years, it is truly remarkable to see how the people in this small village of Lanchang have rebuilt their livelihoods and are reconnecting the broken threads of their culture and community. Back at Pak Mohammed's home, the conversation continues. Do uh, Mohammed's children like to eat the grass area yet? Apakah anak Pak Muhammad sudah pernah mencoba makan garam laria yang besar? I guess that means no so far. Anak-anak. Not yet, not yet. We're working on it.